Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Betsy Politan, who is an Alexander Technique teacher in the Boston area. She uh, is a master lecturer at Boston University College of Fine Arts, and she um, has been an Alexander Technique teacher for over 30 years and has recently written a book called The Actor's Secret, uh, the subtitle being Techniques for Transforming Human Patterns and Improving Performance. And we're going to talk about that book and about Betsy's approach to teaching. Uh, Betsy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Robert. It's absolutely my pleasure to be here with you. Well, it's a pleasure talking to you as well. And before we get into the book and your and your uh, work with actors and, and others, could you give our listeners a very, uh, very, very short description or definition of the Alexander Technique? Yeah, sure. I would say the Alexander Technique is a practical method for self-improvement. Uh, the technique cultivates ease of movement and increases well-being through the through neuromuscular re-education or body mind re-education. Okay, and yeah. you um, you had indicated earlier that uh, you wanted to read the first paragraph, which is quite short, um, yep. from the introduction because it, in a way, uh, segues into your your entire approach to to teaching. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and read that? I've got the book in front of me so I can make sure you don't make any mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, so from the introduction. After my first Alexander lesson, I walked out of the room thinking, this is still me, but not the me I always knew. Actually, a very different me than I knew when I walked in. This brief experience of an altered sense of self excited and daunted me at the same time. I had moved through an opening, pulled aside an inner veil, and been exposed to radical new possibilities and choices of how I sensed myself and saw the world around me. My body felt less constricted. My mind was less worried and my senses were more vibrant and alive. The colors of the world seemed brighter. As I walked along the street that day, I knew I was still me, but a different me, a new me. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, um, the sort of thing that, that I think Alexander Technique teachers sometimes uh, get from new students after a first lesson, but I think also it would be good to say here that not everyone uh, has quite that dramatic an experience yes, initially. Yes, this is true. In, yes. in my case, the drama, as it were, occurred in the week or so following the first lesson, and for mm. some of my students, uh, the drama doesn't really, I'm using drama in quotes yeah. here, doesn't really occur until maybe a week or two after starting lessons. Um, Absolutely. So, we're all so different, you know, with different We're all makeups. different. And yeah. So, some yeah. people are extremely sensitive to the work. Yes. And yeah. they may have that kind of uh, experience in the first five minutes of a lesson. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. other, other students, it might take uh, two or three lessons before they start really sensing the change. But right. it doesn't... That only matters insofar as their the likelihood of them s staying for those two or three lessons to get to mm -hmm, that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, often I think there's a even if that major piece doesn't happen, some kind of spark of curiosity, you know, uh, emerges. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So. Um, w could you say a little about how that uh, initial experience of yours uh, uh, colors your your work in working with actors and I assume uh, other other students as well? Yes. Well, you know that that first lesson of mine was th uh, 36 years ago, and in that moment, you know, as I look back on it, or even then, I 
the the odd part is that it's me. I know it's me, but it's a different me. It's not the me that I always walk around with. So there's a realization that there's lots of different versions of me, and I can sort of go back and forth between the different versions. And of course, we all do this anyway, but but without thinking about it. You know, the way you talk to your uh, husband or wife or son or daughter or you know taxi driver who drew, drew, drives by you and splashes water on you you know we we respond differently to different people mm-hmm. and and so uh these different aspects of yourself are become evident when you start thinking about it and then you take it one step further for an actor you actually need to become these different uh personalities or different characters as they're called and and to be able to do that, you need to have some awareness of your own identities or identifications or, or mm-hmm. what you think about yourself. Mm-hmm. So an, an actor I, uh, needs to be able to do, uh, to not only be able to express their own possible identities, but go into others as well that might be very alien to them. Exactly. And yeah. that's quite a skill. And it's also... Yep. Um, can be uh, a little tricky if especially if the role they're going into has some features that they don't want to carry over into the rest of their lives absolutely i'm thinking yeah. of yeah. um i'm thinking of the uh, movie version of uh, the hunchback of notre notre yeah, dame yes. where yes. charles lawton who's Lawton. a brilliant actor and, and used uh, used some um equipment to create partly create the hunch but he also had to distort himself quite a bit and um, my understanding is that he overdid it and it developed yep. some some serious back issue back issues yes so, an yes. actor's got to be able to step outside him or herself but needs to also be able to return i guess that yes might be one way of putting it Yes, a, a modern version of that is, well, t- two stories. One is uh, recently a uh, former student of mine played the uh, the role in The Elephant Man, and that also includes a distortion of, of body. Mm-hmm. And when I, when I spoke to him after the show, he said, uh, I, I had to use everything you ever taught me in that role, you know? So it, the, the Alexander technique can be so helpful. And mm-hmm. one, one other story is... Uh, a young man was playing, this was at the Hunting Theater, a local regional theater here. Uh, he was playing a uh, a college student. He was a- older, but he played a college student, and he had to sit on a couch and sort of lean down in the couch like, may I, you know, if I may say some college students do, sort of slumped over. Mm-hmm. And, and after two days of rehearsal, his back was killing him. And mm-hmm. so he came came to me for a session, and we sorted out how to stay in that position but not have the extreme holding that one would normally have and that's what the alexander technique is so good for is to find some space inside different positions absolutely and i yeah. guess i mean one way of describing the alexander technique in general terms is it helps you do whatever you're going to do with greater ease and comfort and if what you're yeah. going to do is deliberately and consciously distort your body for a purpose, yeah. in this case yeah. acting, yeah. Um, how you can do that with greater ease with a, with a bit of training and, and understanding right. of, yeah. of how your body works. What, what is it that drew you to be particularly interested in working with actors? Well, it kind of came sort of as life sometimes does. Cause it came from, uh, uh, you know, a sort of not my, it wasn't my idea. Mm-hmm. I was, I, I was uh, doing quite a bit of work with musicians. I was, uh, get, I was teaching at the Berklee College of Music, guest teaching there and New England Conservatory. And somebody from the Boston University Conservatory called me and said, we're thinking about having an Alexander Technique class. And I thought, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And I went in and I uh, basically uh, auditioned. They they had me teach it, teach some students, and it it went well. And they said, "Would you like to teach here?" And I said, "Sure," because I I, I enjoy very much working with performers mm-hmm. in, in general. And, and one of the major 
things that happens for me that I've noticed over the years when working with performers is that often they have a feeling inside that says, somewhere deep inside says, I know I can do this. You know, I can be really good uh, singer, dancer, you know, musician, actor. I know that inside. And yet, it doesn't always come out in performance. You know, I mm -hmm. can do it mm -hmm. at home when I practice, but then I go to rehearsal and it just doesn't happen. So a uh, part that's very interesting to me, which carried over from the music into the acting in terms of performance, is what's in the way? Why, mm -hmm. isn't, why, isn't, why aren't you able to, uh, you know, s s do, do the monologue at home and then go into rehearsal or go from rehearsal to the stage? All those steps get interfered with and take one away from that place inside that says, I know I can be a really good actor. I know I can nail this. And so that, that part was a through line in my work. Like, what's in the way? Why isn't this happening like, like you wanted to? Exactly. And I, I tend to work a lot with musicians, although mm -hmm. I'm certainly not one myself. Uh -huh. And uh, when, when, for example, I'm working with singers, the question always comes up, well, how come I can sing so well in the shower, yeah. uh, but when I get on stage, it, it, there are restrictions. I can't yeah. really sing at my full potential. And there's kind of that term, stage fright, yes. which is, uh, I guess it's a valid term, but it doesn't really help you that much uh, in, in terms of, of changing that dynamic. You need to actually right. have some... Uh, some processes you can use, Absolutely. of course, and that's what the Alexander technique gives you. And I assume Absolutely. it's the same yeah. thing. I'm, well, I'm sure it's the same thing for actors yes, as well, yeah. or dancers, yeah. or a any yeah. performers. And yeah. and just to extend it a bit, it's probably true for all of us. Uh, let's say we have uh, an important interview coming yeah, a job up. Interview. A job interview, absolutely. job interview. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. have a really clear idea of what we want to get yep, across. Yep, yep. We may have practiced it a bit with, yeah, with someone yep, we yep, know. Yep. And it sounds great. It, and we yep. get there and the pressure's and on. And yep. that, there it goes. And, and again, that brings up, you know, a big piece of the Alexander work is stimulus and response. I'm stimulated in this situation. And how do I respond? And in the Alexander technique, we have that moment between stimulus and response where I can have a choice. I can change my response. And that's so valuable in the, you know, even in the instance you're giving in the, the job interview, you know. Yeah. And, and when you say change our response, um, it, it's basically some very specific mental directions that a teacher can, can give you and show you with their hands as well. Yes. So you... Yes. You, uh, with a bit of practice, you can bring them to bear pretty much whenever you want. Absolutely. And, and that, course, in, yeah. Yeah, and go that ahead. includes, I was going to say that includes some uh, directions of doing and some directions of non-doing. And mm -hmm. both, are, both are important. Mm -hmm. Saying no, no to the habitual pattern in order to say yes to something else, which is very freeing in life and on the stage. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Yeah. I, I would think another reason why some teachers are drawn to working with performers, uh, sort of a more practical one, from a teacher's point of view, is certainly musicians, and I, I guess actors as well, uh, are are um, totally uh, used to the idea of coming for lessons, you know, it's not like some odd thing in their in their experience. And, right. Um, whereas, Training. you know, people yeah. with back pain and so on, they're more used to going to doctors. Yes. And different, or different physical mindset. therapists or whatever. Yeah. So um, they they do tend to be, uh, and plus they're they're highly motivated. Yes. They're yes. Highly it, motivated. It, it, and another thing is, you know, especially with I. Uh, with musicians, or, or like a, sing a singer will sing a song, and then I work or you work with them for two, three minutes, and they sing again, and the difference is so, you know, palatable. You can hear it, you can see it, you can feel it. It's just, 
and they're aware like wow that's what i want so it's mm -hmm. it's kind of it's kind of quick you it know can which be, it can be very can quick be, with performers yeah yes absolutely so that, that's that's exciting you know so um i i what for an actor or aspiring actor listening to our talk today um could you, in a nutshell, tell them why they might do well to explore uh, having some lessons in the Alexander Technique? Just very quickly, yeah, what, what yeah, would be the, maybe, the, the I, benefit? I would, uh, let me maybe give an example. I mm -hmm. think that's, uh, stories are always nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we all have a, a, a way we walk. We have kind of a signature walk. And if someone, I see my friend in the distance, I know that's my friend because I see their shoulders are a little bit forward or one arm is swinging. Their, their, their signature walk. And I can identify my friend because I know that walk. And yet, for an actor, you need to be able to change that walk to become another character. Mm -hmm. And so the Alexander technique helps you bring awareness to your own habitual walk and then make a choice about, do I want to continue doing that? And of course, if I'm playing another character, the answer is no. I need to stop hunching forward or stop moving that one arm so that someone in, in the, does not recognize me mm -hmm. as myself. But then I take on the life you know, the imaginary circumstances of the character that I'm playing and my walk becomes different. Right. And that's, yeah. that, and, and that's you what need you want. To, you need to be able to do that quickly and with very yes. little effort. Absolutely. Uh, to, to, to be effective. So, Absolutely. Uh, the, looking at your book, um, it does seem as though you're, well, the title of the book is The Actor's Secret, but it does seem to also be a book for people who are not actors. Yes. Uh, and that you're you're really uh reaching out to a much more general audience. So yes. for example, I mean we're, the, all, we're, we're all actors. We're so all actors and we talked yes. about the job interview situation. Yeah, but, exactly. But you know a lot of people uh who are not not performers who end up seeing an Alexander technique teacher uh, come for, for my experience for one of two reasons. One, they're in pain. Yeah, big uh, one. Back yeah. pain, neck pain, so on. And the other is that they have come to believe or maybe people have told them that their posture needs improvement. Yes. That, those are yes. the two things I see all the time. Absolutely. Um, sometimes yeah. people come for balance issues, uh, yes. bre breathing yeah. issues. But those two, posture breathing, and yeah. pain, yeah. are really up there at the top. Now, what yeah. would you say to someone who who feels their – let's start with the posture part – feels their posture is eh, not what it should be? Well, yeah, I would, um, I would show, basically have them look at – more closely at, at what their posture is, what they're doing, mm -hmm. and and then take a look at sort of where they want to go with it. You know, like how much, like some people are comfortable with a certain degree of uprightness and or good posture, and others sort of want a lot of good posture. You know, like where where is the comfort level? So where do you want to be, and then how do you get there? Mm -hmm. So you know, we use the Alexander directions, letting your neck be free so your head frees away so you come when your head frees toward the ceiling you you just automatically come a bit more upright mm -hmm. and, and i also talk a lot about support from the ground and the ground supporting you and that gives you uh, a sense of ease and uprightness also and and what the alexander technique does not do is tell you to stand up straight or sit exactly. up straight, yeah. which is um, a, um, the common, yeah. which is very common and extraordinarily ineffective, really. Exactly. Um, so, and then for the second group, people who who are, who are having pain, and it, it typically, again, in my experience, the people who come f who are drawn to take Alexander lessons have explored other ways of dealing with that pain. They've been through the medical system. They've been yes. to physical therapy. They may have had chiropractic adjustments. They're often on uh, on sometimes quite dramatically high doses of, yes. of painkillers. Yeah. What would you say to someone in that situation? Why might they be drawn to the... Why might they be, 
find the technique a useful thing to explore. Yeah, I think, you know, my experience is when people that the category that you're talking about come in, um, one of the things that I do with them is point out to them what they're doing. And often people have no idea how they're standing or inhabiting or being in themselves. Somebody can be... uh, you know, standing and leaning into one hip all the time, and they have no idea, and they wonder why their hip hurts or that mm-hmm. one leg hurts, or they stand with their back very arched, you know, in a big curve at their lower mm-hmm. back, right? And 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 they have no idea that they're doing it, and partially bringing their awareness to what they're actually doing and how they're moving. And I do use a mirror. I mean, yesterday I had this a, a new student. And he came in and he was standing and I said, uh, um, and he had back pain and he said, oh, this is how I stand. And I, I had him turn and look in the mirror and his, his uh, shoulder area was so forward in relation to his hips. And he said, oh, I didn't know I was doing that. And so in that moment, something of just seeing that and realizing it is so helpful. Yeah, and you might think that you would see that yourself in a mirror, but we're so used to looking straight on, and we tend to be looking at mirrors from the point of view of shaving or combing our hair. Right, right. And so we don't... How the outfit looks. So (laughs) it is possible to have an extraordinarily bizarre ways of standing and moving that everyone around you notices and just says, oh, that's so-and-so. But you could be completely unaware of it absolutely that's, that's what's kind of yes. amazing yeah and, and again and, back back to the actor that's mm-hmm. so valuable because you're standing on stage and you're leaning into one hip or scrunching your eyebrows and you don't know it and everybody else knows it and the character would never do that so we don't believe you and that's a big issue yes <laughs> absolutely yeah. um Is there, we're kind of coming, I think, probably towards the end of our our time, but is there anything that we haven't touched on that you would like to to mention? I I think one of the, uh, we've touched it a bit, but I think one of the most important um, ideas, especially in the book, is that, um, and it's called The Actor's Secret, I think one of the secrets is that you have a choice. And in life or on stage, you can choose to carry on in your habitual way or you can say no to the habit and allow a space for something else to emerge or for something else to happen. And I think that sort of gift that the Alexander Technique teaches you is so valuable, like I say, whether on stage or in life, that, wait a minute, I can make a different choice here is so valuable. In my, my my opinion, one could one. I guess one could define the Alexander technique as the gift of choice. Yeah, that I, sounds I, I good. I never thought yeah. of that before, but yeah. Well, yeah. Um, my uh, my guest today has been Betsy Politan. She's a Alexander technique teacher in the Boston area, and she works a lot with actors. And she's written a book called The Actor's Secret. Uh, techniques for transforming habitual patterns and improving performance. But I would recommend this book to anybody who would like to move, stand, sit, whatever, with greater ease, or anyone who's in chronic, has chronic pain and hasn't been able to fix that with with medic with the medical side of things. So, um, uh, Betsy, thank you so much for for being on the show today. Absolutely, my pleasure, Robert. It's it's a it's a very thrilling and exciting to talk about this work with you and uh, share it with the public. 